Hi, welcome to English Composition. I'm Michael Chang. I'm here today with Cher Chen. 各位同学，大家好，欢迎回到英文作文课程。我是 Cher， 在我身边的是郑老师。In the last three chapters, we have learned how to describe an object, how to describe a person, and how to describe a location. Today, we're going to focus on an event. So our topic today is how to narrate an event, story, or experience. 好，在前三个单元之中呢，我们已经学习哦，如何去描绘一件物品、一个人或是一个地点。那在今天呢，我们将要继续去学习哦，要如何去描述一件事情，也就是说，所谓的一件事、一个故事或是一次经验。We're going to go through the entire process of coming up with an idea, finding specific details to add to your story, and then organizing your ideas until you're ready to write the final essay. 好，我们今天呢要带各位同学从头到尾去一步一步的完成一份写作哦，包括从一开始呢，我们会先集思广益，想出确切的一些细节，然后呢，我们去组织这些想法，最后完成写作，开始。Now let's learn more about narratives in our writing focus section. 好，首先呢，我们先来看看这个叙述文所谓的写作重点。It's easy to define a narrative. A narrative is like a story which can transport its readers into the time and space of the world portrayed in the narrative. 好，我们现在呢，先帮叙述文下一个定义哦。所谓的叙述文呢，它就像是一个故事，它可以帮助读者，它被转移到一个这个故事所描写的时空之中。In other words, a narrative is a piece of writing that recreates an experience that happened in time. 好，我们换句话来解释一下呢。所谓的叙述文，就是指一种透过对时间的描述来重建你的经历的一种写作方式。Writing a narrative can be a rewarding process through reflecting on the event and through recreating recreating that experience for your readers. Writing the narrative can enable you to understand the significance or the value of the event in your life. 好，写一篇好的叙述文呢，其实是一个非常值得的一个过程哦。透过我们去反思这件事情发生的原委跟过程，以及透过我们希望帮助读者去身临其境的这种动机来写作一篇叙述文，就可以帮助你身为一个作者去了解这件事情。And it can also help the people that you interact with understand what motivates you, or else they can know what influenced you to become the person that you are. 好，那同时呢，我们还可以去影响到我们的读者哦，让他去了解这件事情对于你的人生的重要性以及一些影响力。So now here are the key features of narrative writing. 好，以下呢，我们会来为各位同学介绍一下叙述文写作的一些主要特色。Narratives are generally written in the first person, that is, using I. 好，叙述文写作呢，通常会透过第一人称来写。所谓的第一人称，也就是透过我这个身份来叙述事情。However, you can also write narratives in the third person. This is using he, she, or it,、um, and particularly if you're writing about a celebrity, for example. 好，那当然也有时候我们会发现有些故事是透过第三人称，像是他哦这样的角度来撰写。那这通常是在当你替别人执笔去撰写某个名人的传记啊，或是别人的事情的时候。Our second point is that narratives rely on concrete details to convey their point. 好，那第二点呢？叙述文写作必须要依靠很具体的细节来传递一些讯息。Now these details should create a unified, forceful effect or a dominant impression, and this means that the whole narrative should fit together to show a specific side of a person. 好，那这些细节呢，必须要能够产生非常强而有力的阅读效果。哦，那这样才能够让读者呢能够更明白这个印象。Now narratives are also stories, so there are some story conventions that you should follow. 好，那叙述文呢，它也就像是说故事一样，因此呢，我们在说故事的时候有一些习惯，我们必须要遵守。So now your narrative should have a plot, characters, settings, a conflict, a climax, and an ending. 好，所以你的叙述文呢，应该包含了剧情、故事的背呃，这角色、背景。还有一些情节冲突、故事的高潮以及最后的结尾。And then fourth, in addition to telling a story, a narrative also communicates a main idea or a lesson learned. 好，那除了讲故事之外呢，一篇好的叙述文应该要能够传达一个重要的想法或是一个值得学习的重点。
And so you should think of a narrative as a kind of story that provides a formative, provides information about a formative experience. And so this is, is an experience that shapes how you see the world or also how maybe you were influenced later in your life. 好，我们可以把叙述文的内容当做一种形成性的经验的叙述哦。所谓的形成性经验呢，指的就是塑一个经验能够帮助你塑造出你怎么样去看待这个世界，还有你在未来你的生活中的一些影响，这样子的一个故事。And so, from this experience, you should learn something. And so, this central idea should reflect the learning point, and then the conclusion should also summarize this learning point. 好，那在这个过程中呢，作者一定是有学到了一些重要的事情哦。所以呢，叙述文的中心思想应该要能够反映出他学习过后的成果，然后再在结论的部分呢，再写出学习之后效果的一些摘要。And so right now, you might feel a little bit confused. You might feel like you have no idea where to start in writing your own narrative. And so we're going to give you a specific example of how to take an event that you experienced and to turn it into a written narrative. 好，那现在各位同学可能会觉得有点困惑哦，不知道该怎么样去写这篇所谓具有形成性经验的一篇叙述文。那接下来呢，我们会给各位同学一个例子，让你看看如何将自己亲身经历的事情呢，变成一篇叙述文。And now the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine what we can write about, and so we're going to brainstorm first in order to find the topic. 好，那我们要做的第一件事呢，就是决定要写什么啦。那我们首先呢，先来脑力激荡一下。And when we're brainstorming, we're going to use the free writing technique that we introduced to you in Unit Eight. 好，那我们这一次呢，在做脑力激荡的方式，我们会透过自由写作来进行。Now let's review the basic guidelines for free writing. 好，那这个我们在单元八曾经提过。那我们现在再为各位同学复习一下自由写作的一些方法。Right, so then our first principle is that you should write nonstop for a set period of time, usually 10 to 20 minutes. 好，那第一点，在一个特定的时间内呢，哦，通常是大概十到二十分钟之内，你应该不不间歇的、不停止的一直写作。Next, keep writing, even if you have to write something like I don't know what to write about. 好，那你要必须要持续的继续的写作、哦，即使你真的想不出写什么，甚至写下我不知道该写什么，这样也没有关系。Next, don't make corrections as you write. 好，在写的过程之中，那千万不要停下来去修正你的写作。Just write whatever comes into your mind. 好，写下任何进入你脑中你想到的点子。Do not judge or examine what you're writing. 跟其他正常的写作不一样哦，在自由写作的时候，不要去批评或是检视你的写作。And then when your free writing time runs out, then just take a look at what you wrote and then see if you have any interesting ideas. 好，那当你自由写作的时间到了之后呢，你就停下来看看自己写的内容是不是有包含一些有趣的想法，可以当做你接下来写短文的一些重点。And so we're going to show you an example of some free writing that we made for this essay today. You can find it on page 109 of your textbook. 好，那接下来呢，各位同学可以来看一下，我们给各位同学一个自由写作的范本。这个范本呢，在课本第一百零九页也有哦。各位同学可以回头再去看一下。好，我们各位同学可以看到，现在显示在屏幕上的就是一百零九页的自由写作的范本。那你可以发现呢，它写作内容其实非常的口语化哦。他说：“我现在要来写一个故事，嗯，一个故事。那到底要写什么呢？哦，那接下来开始不断的在思考，我要写写我是什么样的人呢、啊？还是呃，我要写写我是很适合做些什么事呢？最后他发现说，哎，其实我可以来写一写我学习西班牙文的过程哦，因为学习西班牙文大家都会讲英文，西班牙文比较少哦。那他就发现了，其实西班牙文是一个可以着手、可以去着眼的一个过程。”那他接下来再去反思说，在写西班牙学习西班牙文的过程中，他有发生的一些什么事情？哦，原来有一些挫折、一些困难，他克服了。那他也变得更加的、更努力、更能够持续不懈了。那他也因此就决定说，哎，这就是这个自由写作中让他发现最有趣的论点。So you can see that this free writing gave us an idea of what we can write about, and we'll learn more about that event when we come back after our break. 好，我们得可以从这个写作自由写作的例子中呢，发现说，哎，它的确可以帮助我们去发现很多的新的想法哦。那等一下呢，我们会来看看从这个自由写作中准呃一些准备出来的影片。那我们先休息一下，待会回来再一起欣赏。
welcome back. So before the break, we did some free writing and we learned about a Spanish class and an event that happened in that Spanish class that gave us an idea that we can use for the basis of our narration essay. 欢迎各位同学回来。在休息之前呢，我们已经给各位同学看过一个自由写作的范例，发现说，哎，这个作者呢，其实很希望能够继续去描写西班牙文的学习过程，还有一些经过哦。那我们接下来呢，就来看看这个部分。Now let's watch a video about this event and learn more about what happened. 好，我们接下来就来看看这个影片。Hola, Clara. Yo me llamo Miguel Clara. Encantada. Fui mi lenta a Madrid. Buenas tardes. Yo hey, soy Sally. What are you Sarah. doing? Oh, hey, Jim. I'm practicing Spanish. You are? When did you start learning Spanish? A year ago. Is Spanish easy to learn? Actually, I encountered a difficulty when I started learning Spanish. Really? What is that? Well, I could not pronounce the Spanish letter S correctly. My Spanish teacher taught me to roll up my tongue against the top of my mouth and then blow gently to make the tongue vibrate. I tried, but I just couldn't make my tongue vibrate as I wished. You must feel really frustrated at the time. Yeah, I almost wanted to give up. So what made you continue? My classmate Jeffrey encouraged me, so I practiced every day by repeating Spanish words over and over again. After a few weeks of practice, I finally made it. Congratulations. This is why people always say practice makes perfect. Now that we know more about this event, let's start to turn this event into an essay. And let's look at the features of a narrative that we need to include into our essay. 好，我们现在已经看完这个短片了。那接下来呢，我们再回顾一下关于叙述文写作的一些特点。那看看我们应该在这篇作文中放入一些什么样的内容。And we mentioned earlier that narratives as stories should, con, uh, should include these following story conventions. 好，我们前面已经讲过了，叙述文呢，其实就像是说故事一样，因此呢，有一些说故事的习惯需要遵守，包括了像是剧情里面应该要有背景啊、角色啊、冲突啊、剧情的高潮以及最后的结尾。Now, in addition, a narrative can also use the plot, the climax, and the ending to form what we could call a cliffhanger. 好，那同时呢，我们也要再知道哦，在这一些这个内容之中呢，我们可以利用这个情节、故事的高潮部分以及最后的结尾部分结合在一起，创造所谓高潮迭起的这样的叙述文。Now the story can be considered like a curve with an inflection point. 好，所谓的一个故事呢，我们可以把它想象成是一个具有转折点这样的一个起伏曲线。And so, if we take a look at this graphic over here, we can see that the inflection point is the peak of the story over here. 好，那我们现在看到这个图片哦，这就是所谓的故事起伏曲线。那这个转折的点呢，哦，也就是所谓的剧情高潮的部分。And so, this is the point where the story is most exciting, or where the tension is greatest. This is the point where your reader should be asking, "What happened next?" 好，那这个转折点呢，呃，也通常应该是故事中最兴奋、最紧张的部分。通常呢，在这个部分的时候，你的读者应该要会提出说啊，然后呢，然后呢，哦，这样子的一个问题。Now this inflection point doesn't have to be in the exact middle of the story. It can happen a little bit earlier. It can happen a little bit later, depending on what happens in your story. 好，所谓的转折点呢，当然不一定要像我们刚刚看到的曲线一样，要刚好在故事的正中间出现哦。当然，它可以发生在前面一点，或是后面一点。但是呢，为了方便起见呢，哦，我们就可以以这个为主。Now let's decide on the plot, the setting, the characters, the conflict, climax, and ending for our story. 好，那接下来呢，我们来为我们这个接下来要写作的故事哦，挑出我们的剧情、背景、角色、冲突、剧情高潮以及结尾的设定。Now our plot can be about deciding on the challenge of learning how to pronounce the Spanish R properly. 好，那在剧情的部分呢，主要就是在讲述学习西班牙文里面的打舌音的一个过程。The setting will be at a university while the student was, or while the the writer was a student there. 
好，那这个故事的背景呢，应该就是在一所大学里面哦。因为在这个文短文呃这个短片里面呢，我们可以看到两位学生呢，哦，他们都是大学生。And the characters will be the student and the student's friend who had learned Spanish earlier. 好，那角色的部分呢，有两位哦，一位是正在学习西班牙文的学生，一位呢是这个学生的朋友。And the conflict will be about how difficult it is to pronounce that Spanish R sound, and how the student, how it made the student want to drop out of Spanish class. 啊，故事的冲突部分呢，主要是在于学习发出这个打舌音的过程呢，非常困难。还有这个困难如何打击到这个学生，让他几乎都想要放弃了。And the climax could be when the student wants to quit taking Spanish, or it could be when the student finally learns how to pronounce the R correctly for the first time. 至于剧情的高潮呢，可以落在学生几乎要放弃学习西班牙文的这个时候，或者呢，我们也可以把它落在是当他们学第一次成功的发出打舌音的那个当下。And the ending will be about what she learned about the experience, which was to be persistent, and that practice makes perfect. 好，那结尾的部分呢，可以说哦，这个学生从经验中学习哦，了解学习呢是必须要努力不懈的哦，不断的练习才能够熟能生巧。Now we also mentioned earlier that a key feature of narratives is that narratives rely on concrete details to convey their point. 好，那当晚各位同学应该还记得哦，前面我们曾经提到过，叙述文呢必须要依靠它非常具体的细节来传递一些讯息。And that these details should combine together to com to create a unified, forceful effect or a dominant impression. 好，那这些细节呢，也必须要能够产生强而有力的阅读效果，让读者能够产生一种优势主宰的一种印象。Now let's work on adding details to what we to the ideas that we have so far. 好，那所以现在呢，我们就来帮故事加入一些细节的部分。And we can do it by creating a chart like this one. 好，我们也可以呢，透过建立一个表格哦，来达成这个目标。And so you can see here that we use WH questions like who, what, when, where, and why to organize the specific details that we can add to our narrative. 啊，你会发现呢，其实我们利用了 WH questions 哦，这种 WH 问句开头的字哦，来帮助我们去加入呃，去组织这一些细节哦，像是包括 who 是谁 ，what 是什么东西 ，when 什么时候 ，where 什么地点，以及 why 是什么原因。You can also see that we add details about the climax of the story. 啊，你会发现呢，在这个剧情高潮的部分，我们也加入了很多的一些细节。And so you can see we have extra details about the main conflict and how the main character of the story practiced to overcome that conflict. 哦，你会发现呢，我们在这个部分哦，我们提到的很多的这个内容哦，包括他怎么样去练习，怎么样去克服这个困难。And then finally, the last column of our chart shows details about what happened after the problem was solved. 好，那在这个表格最后一栏的部分呢，我们写出来了，在冲突的问题解决之后呢，发生了什么样的事情。And so we have information about how she felt and also what she learned from this from the experience. 好，从短片之中呢，我们也获得了一些资料哦，包括这个主角他有什么样的想法，还有他从中获取什么样的经验。And so now, with all this preparation that we've taken so far, we now have many ideas about what we can write for our essay, but we shouldn't start writing yet. We're going to have another step, which is to make an outline. 好，那现在有了这些准备呢，其实我们已经对于写作这篇叙述文有非常详尽的想法了。不过还是要再稍等一下哦，我们离这个起步呢还差最后一点点，也就是我们必须要来条列这篇文章的大纲。And so our outline will include a topic sentence. And your topic sentence should present your topic, but it should also have a central ideal about the topic. 好，我们现在呢，条列出来的大纲哦，就会包含所谓的主题句。那这个主题句呢，哦，必须要呈现这个文章的主题，同时呢，要写出这篇文章最中心的一个论点。And the central idea is your position about the topic. 好，所谓的主轴论点呢，也就是指你对于这个主题哦的立场，还有你的意见。And so if we take a look at another chart, we can see our final outline that we made before writing this essay. 好，现在的屏幕上呢，显示给各位同学看的就是我们最后列出来的大纲。We can see that the topic is about learning Spanish, and the central idea about the topic is that pronouncing the R sound is very difficult. 
好，我们可以发现呢，文章的主题哦，就是学习西班牙文。那在主轴论点的部分呢，则是学习打舌音哦，是有多么的困难哦。And then we organize the events of the narrative chronologically. This means by time. 好，接下来呢，我们照着时间发生的先后顺序，把整个故事组织起来。And so we're organizing the events in the order that they actually happened. That's we're telling the story. 哦，那你会发现呢，这故事这个剧情哦，是照着它发生的顺序来呈现的。And then finally, at the end of our outline, we see that we have a concluding sentence which tells the lesson that the writer learned from this event. 啊，那最后呢，我们就看到了结尾句哦，这点出来说，从这个经验中，他学习到的一个人生的课程。All right, let's take a break now, and when we come back, we'll take a look at our final essay. 好，那现在我们先让各位同学休息一下。回来之后呢，我们就来看看最后写出来的文章。We're going to take a look at our essay, but before we do that, let's review some of the key vocabulary words that we're going to use in that essay. 好，那在我们开始看写作范例之前呢，我们先来看一些在写作范例中会用到的单词。Right, so now our first vocabulary word is encounter. 第一个单词遭遇。Right, our next vocabulary word is pronunciation. This is the way you utter a sound of a word. 好，第二个单词呢，指的是发音哦，也就是当你要试着把声音哦，正确的音去发出来的时候，我们会用这个单词 pronunciation. Right, our next word is roll, and this is to fold something or form something into kind of a round shape. It's not like the the rolling of a ball down a hill. 好，这个单词是指卷的意思哦。你把东西卷起来哦，变成一个一个像球状的物体。Right, our next word is blow. 好，下一个单词指的是吹气。Okay, we go on. Our next word is vibrate. 好，接下来这个字呢，指的是用震动或是抖动的意思。Next word is is frustrated, and this is can also mean something like disappointed. 好，接下来我们看到这个单词指的是沮丧的，跟它一样的同义字呢，我们常用的是 disappointed， 一样是指很失望的。Right, next word is give up, which means to stop doing something. 好，接下来这个单词呢 ，give up 指的是放弃。Right, our next word is immediately, which means to do something right away. 好，下一个单词 immediately 指的是马上。立刻哦，它是一个副词。Our next word is flexible, which means something can be bent easily. 好，接下来这个单词呢，指的是容易弯曲的。Our next word is flap. 好，接下来这个单词指的是摆动或者是拍打。Okay, we go on. Intensive. 好 ，intensive 这个单词呢是形容词，指的是很密集的或是很集中的。Okay, our next word is thrilled. 好，接下来这个单词 thrilled 是形容词，指的是你强感受到一个非常强烈的这种很兴奋、很震撼的感觉。Okay, we have another word, inspirational. 好，接下来这个形容词呢，指的是受到激励的哦，很受到鼓励的、启发的。And then our last、uh, vocabulary word is actually a phrase which is practice makes perfect, which means that you should do something over and over again, and then you will be able to do it very well. 好，那接下来呢，我们为各位同学介绍一个常用的一个呃，算是一个片语哦。它指的意思就是说，你做一件事不断的重复，最后呢，你就可以把它做的非常的完美。也就是在中文里面，我们说熟能生巧。Right now, let's take a look at our writing model. 好，接下来呢，我们就来看看写作范例。When I first started to learn Spanish, I encountered a difficulty with my pronunciation of the Spanish letter R. 当我开始学习西班牙文的时候，在学习发出打舌音 R 这个字上面，碰到了很大的困难。My Spanish teacher taught me to roll up my tongue against the top of my mouth and then blow gently to make the tongue vibrate. 我的西班牙文老师教我要卷起舌头。顶住口腔的上缘，然后轻轻的吹气，让舌头去颤动。I tried and tried, but I couldn't make my tongue vibrate as I wished. I was very frustrated, and told my classmate 
that I didn't want to learn Spanish anymore. 我尝试了一次又一次，还是没办法成功的让我的舌头如我所愿的颤动。我觉得非常挫折，告诉我同学说我再也不想学西班牙文了。However, my classmate encouraged me to try harder instead of giving up immediately. 然而呢，我的同学鼓励我，与其马上放弃，倒不如再更努力的试试看。He told me that I could pronounce the sound only if I practiced a lot and made my tongue flexible enough to flap. He told me that to successfully make this sound, I had to practice a lot. 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 From the day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. From that day on, I practiced every day by repeating a Spanish word which could increase the flexibility of my tongue. Even native Spanish speakers praise my clear pronunciation. This experience is inspirational. I proved to myself that practice indeed makes perfect. Now, even if you are a native speaker, you will praise my clear pronunciation. This experience is inspirational. I proved to myself that practice indeed makes perfect. Now, even if you are a native speaker, you will praise my clear pronunciation. This experience is inspirational. Of preparing to write an, a narration essay. Ah, 那今天呢，我们已经带领各位同学去经过了整个的写作的过程哦。And so, at the beginning, you can realize that maybe we didn't really know what to write about, so we took some time to brainstorm. Today, we did some free writing in order to come up with an idea to write about. 好，那在一开始的时候呢，你会发现其实要写一个故事并不容易，因此呢，我们进行了脑力激荡。那在这个单元之中呢，我们使用了自由写作的方式来为各位同学做示范。And so this free writing gave us this topic, which is writing about the the Spanish event, and then it also gave us a perspective on what was what we learned from this event. 好，那这个脑力激荡的过程呢，哦，它已经帮助我们找到了主题，并且帮助我们去了解从中呢学到了些什么。Right, and then you can see that we had a story curve, and we used that story curve to fill out the details that we wanted to put into the story. 好，那接下来呢，你也发现我们利用了所谓的故事曲线哦，来帮助我们为这个故事加入一些细节。And then finally, after our story curve was was completed, we came up with that we created an outline to organize the details in our story. 好，那在我们完成这个故事曲线表之后呢，接下来我们就根据它来写出我们的大纲。And so this outline included a topic sentence and also included a conclusion about what we learned. 好，那在我们大纲之中呢，我们就包含了主题句以及结尾句来阐述我们从这个故事中所学到的一些人生经验。And so for your homework, review the grammar exercises and then do the writing activity, which is to write your own narration story. 好，那这个礼拜各位同学回去之后哦，当然就要请各位同学写作自己的一个经验了。And so make sure that you do those pre-writing activities and fill out the story of story chart. 好，那当然在各位同学写作之前呢，千万要记得一定要完成写作前的前置步骤哦。那可以把这个故事的曲线的表格呢，先把它完成。We、we'll、see you next week. Thanks for joining us. 谢谢各位同学今天的参与，我们下次再见。